what happens if I use my empty literal construction to construct a slice? We know, we know that if I do this for some sort of struct type like user, it's equivalent. I hate that the, the playground does that. I got to talk to somebody about that. We know um, if we use empty, empty literal construction for struct type like user, these two lines basically give you the same thing, right? A zero valued uh, user value, right? And this is why, again, I keep wanting to do this over this because we're using the term empty. But I said that empty literal construction doesn't always give you zero value. And here's one of those cases, all right? In this case, you're not going to get a zero valued slice. You're going to get a literally what that syntax stands for. You're going to get an empty slice. Now, why do we need the concept of an empty slice? Eric, come back to me. Well, what if you did a query in your system? What if you did the following query? Uh, give me all of the users in my system that are older than 200 years old. Query doesn't fail, but hopefully it doesn't return anything either. You have essentially an empty set, don't you? And so when it comes to a collection, we really do need the concept of empty, right? Because there are times where we, we have an empty set of users, an empty set of something. And so we need this semantic in the language, empty, empty literal constructions giving us an empty set, you see? Again, this is why I want consistency on syntax. Now, if we were to do em an empty slice, right? Well, that empty slice, again, it's gonna be the three word data structure. It's empty, it's not gonna have a length, it's not gonna have a capacity, but guess what? It does have a pointer. I mean, it is a set, it's an empty set but it is a set and has a pointer. Now, the question is, well, Bill, um, if the empty slice representing an empty set of whatever that type is has a pointer and it's empty, where is it pointing? Well, let's come back to the code. Go has another interesting type called the empty struct. And the curly brackets are actually part of the type's name. This is the empty struct. Now the empty struct represents really a zero allocation type. And I can declare variable after variable after variable of the empty struct and all of these values would represent the same address or memory location because they're all bound basically to a single value that is part of the runtime. That's how the runtime knows that we're dealing with empty. And so when we talk about this syntax constructing an empty slice, then we come back to the board. What we're really saying is that this slice then points to the empty struct, okay? Points to the empty struct. So um, there we have it that represents empty. And the semantics are important because if you pass a nil slice to the JSON marshaller, you know, and you tell it, hey, marshal that into JSON, well, you're going to get null here. But if I tell the JSON marshaller to marshal this into JSON, then we'll get the empty collection in, in JSON syntax. So the, the semantic is critically important, and, and there we have it. Okay, Eric, come back to the code. So again, I would like you to reserve the use of empty literal construction for exceptions and or in this case the construction of a slice that needs to be empty as opposed to nil, two different uh, semantics.